As Kubernetes stands right now, there's one primary question that we're always constantly asking ourselves. How do we make it easier to manage? With multi-cluster deployments, with multi-cloud, with hybrid cloud, with all these different things, we're seeing more and more Kubernetes clusters constantly popping up in environments. And we're not even just talking production, we're talking dev and staging as well. So what we wanna take a look at is we wanna see side by side how to manage each in an effective way. So we're gonna take a look at Open Lens, and then we're gonna take a look at DevTron. Okay, so first we have Open Lens. Now, Open Lens is the open source <laughs> version of Lens from Mirantis. Now, a lot of engineers are definitely going towards the Open Lens path. They're not really, well, don't wanna say they're not really using it, but let's just say a lot of people are definitely going towards open lens right now. So you can install it for free, it's open source. And once you do, you're gonna see something similar to this pane here. And then you have a catalog and your catalog consists of clusters. Now, you're not gonna see all of these clusters in your environment because these are my clusters, of course. But what you can do is, you can hover over this little plus button and you're gonna see something that says sync cube configs and then what you can do is you can point to where your cube config exists and what it'll do is it'll sync all of the clusters in one location so now what you do and, and that's actually something that i really like by the way it's not something that you have to install on multiple clusters nothing like that you can sync them all in one place now here's the thing it is a desktop application so Lens, for example, there is like an enterprise version that I believe there's an enterprise version that you can share configs amongst teammates, but with Open Lens, you cannot. It's a desktop application. So there's a pro and con in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then as you can see, we are in the cluster, okay? So right off the bat, there are other configurations that are needed. And this would be, you know, maybe a ding, maybe not. But what you would have to do is you would have to configure certain pieces of monitoring and observability for everything to work properly out of the box. So if I click on open like that, you can see that it wants to auto detect Prometheus. So what does that mean? It essentially means if you want those types of metrics available here, you're gonna have to install Prometheus. So the next thing is we can see our nodes here, we can see agent and such, but again, because we don't have any metrics being captured, we can't see CPU memory disk. So, you know, maybe this is a ding, maybe it's not because you're gonna maybe have this stuff running, but I just wanna point it out that it's not running out of the box for you, right? And then you get into your workloads and I do like this GUI. I mean, I like the fact that you can click on any of your resources here. And I like that it shows QA, QoS. I like that it shows age running. I like that it shows what type of controller it's running on, whether it's a daemon set, deployment, et cetera. And then all of your resources right here, okay? So what you can do is you can click on one of your resources and you can see various things like CPU, memory, network, file system, Again, if Prometheus was installed, I like that you have this little timer here that it shows you in real time how long it's created for. And then you can see everything from a GUI perspective like you could on the command line. The IP, the service account, conditions, tolerance, all that good stuff, okay? Then if we go into config, we can see all of our config map secrets, et cetera. So we could pretty much see everything from a Kubernetes object or kind perspective. Everything definitely gets pushed up here, which is great. And I like the fact that it's all split up for you. So it's all split up into categories versus just everything being under one place. That is definitely nice. And then you can also deploy your Helm charts here. You can manage your Helm charts and then everything from an RBAC perspective, okay? so. Now let's go ahead and take a look at something similar via DevTron. All right, so DevTron's giving us a lot of capabilities. We can do the Helms chart installation thing. We can even add our own Helm charts if we want to. So we definitely saw that capability 
inlines as well. And it's doing a lot of other things in terms of application deployments, in terms of GitOps deployment, all that good stuff. Even just full CICD deployments, you can do everything from pipeline creation to even deploying Kubernetes-based applications right from here. But I don't want to compare it too much to all this other stuff because it mostly compares to the resource browser, right? So if I go to the resource browser and I click on the default here, we can see very, very similar capabilities within Devtron, okay? Now, the good part is though, if we take a look at node conditions, we do have some observability metrics that come out of the box. I didn't have to install anything separate here for this. So we can see CPU requests, limits, usage, allocation, capacity. So not only do we see a little bit more monitoring and observability data here, but again, I didn't have to install anything out of the box, right? It was just here for me, okay? And then from here, I can open up a terminal to a specific node if it's available. I can see the overall overview and I can even create resources here so I can throw in a Kubernetes manifest here if I wanted to. Now again, going back to the resource browser, we can see all of our workloads. So if we go to pod, we can see the full status, the namespaces, all the restarts, etc. We can click on something that's working and we can actually see the workflow that makes up our configuration via YAML. We could edit the live manifest if we wanted to, just remember to put that in your source control. And then we have all pod capabilities here in terms of connecting to the pod if we wanted to. As you can see, we're in here, so we could literally just do an LS and see that we're inside of the pod. We can see all events that occur. So again, everything from like kubectl logs, everything from kubectl describe pod, we can see all that here and here, which is obviously awesome because we have that all right in the GUI. And again, we can hit the terminal if we wanted to. So overall, we get capabilities in both places, both OpenLens and DevTron. One of the cool things about DevTron is it's not something that's running locally. It's something that's running inside of a Kubernetes cluster. So you can do all of the user configuration and stuff here, all of the SSO, all that good stuff, and actually have one location that your teams can manage and you don't have to pay for it. So with open lens, if you want that team management, you gotta pay for lens, but lens is in not the open source version, but with Devtron, for example, you don't. So you have a lot of capabilities, you have a lot of configuration options, and there are even things you know outside of the lens comparison or the open lens comparison here.